record. All right, very good. And now again, this video is going to be uploaded to YouTube and it always takes 12 hours. It seems like it takes 12 hours for the YouTube videos to process because first of all, YouTube wants to check to make sure my content's okay. And second of all, the closed captions always take so long um, to, to process and I, I just can't seem to get away from it. But the video is available like almost immediately. So I'll email this out to you, uh, this video out to everybody. So a few things. So what I've been doing this weekend is fielding questions. Some of them are really, really good too um, about uh, ASL type of stuff. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and um, I've got so many things open to uh, and make sure that uh, people, here we go. All right, all of, I had to meet with institutional assessment on Saturday, actually the academic service learning office. For any of you that are with organizations such as the uh, online projects that are available via the ASL office, to complete the assignments for tomorrow, um, the Office of Institutional Assessments has been reestablished at St. John's. That's my understanding. Institutional assessment at St. John's University is requiring uh, the Director of Academic Service Learning um, for students that are engaged in one of the four programs that I've made available through the Academic Service Learning Office to perform distance, service learning at a distance, not CMS, but the other ones, um, you have to set up an account with the actual organization. And then after you set up your account with your service learning site, such as the Smithsonian, all they need from you is a screenshot of your account from that service learning site for your ISO letter. That'll be it for right now because you can't do anything else. Later on in the semester, uh, well, so after you go and follow the instructions for setting up and logging into the site for wherever your service learning community partner is, you're going to be held accountable by the system in terms of how many hours you're doing. And then, that system, my understanding, generates a feeder into the Give Pulse system, which you're going to ask, which I'm going to ask for you at the end of the semester. So at the end of the semester, anybody that's engaged in one of the service learning community partners set up by the ASL office, um, you are going to actually be utilizing the academic service learning Give Pulse system. Everybody else who is not, you're going to submit to me what you're doing now, your ISO letter. So I can go ahead and start keeping track of this in Canvas. And um, as soon as I see from your service learning community partner that you've completed your six hours, I'll start generating the names and I'll create a list of names of students that have their six hours completed. And I'll send those names to the Academic Service Learning Office and they will be uh, inputting your hours, your six hours with your service learning community partner uh, into the system for you. So why do we do that? Because it gets too much to manage for both you and I to do because you're required to put feedback and everything in it. I'm having you do uh, pre and post reflections. Mm -hmm. Uh, taking quizzes and actually writing a blog post and your final exam for the LAS 203 course will be you, um, well, there's one of two choices. You're, you're either going to do an e-portfolio or it's going to be a final written exam. Those are the two for LAS 203. So I feel like that I'm doing enough in terms of my engagement with you to be able to um, assess, and I'll be working with your community partners too, to be able to assess how you're doing in the class. So your community partners act as like a, an extension of my hand for me to gauge how you're doing, um, not in the classroom per se, but working with the concepts learned in the classroom to your online service learning community partners. So that's how I'm assessing you to make sure that everything is going okay. So 
So are there any, let me stop there for a second. Are there any questions on that so far? No, nothing in chat. All right, I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the first has to do with the letter due tomorrow. My understanding is based on the video I reviewed that you posted on Saturday and just my review of the information on Canvas is that we are um, drafting the letter that we will eventually submit to our site supervisor with their information, our information, but we're not yet submitting it to them for signature. We're submitting it to you. Right. Well, Okay. Right. Don't go through all the trouble of getting multiple signatures for like every time you do service learning work. Go ahead and just set up the letter and um, and submit to you and first. Sub, some, cause, yes, because this is my way of verifying that you have a community partner. Okay. Okay. And are you making contact with them or are we, because I, so for example, I, I apologize, but like I'm going in for the first time on Wednesday to my partner. So I will, but I, I'm not sure if I should bring the letter at that time for them to sign, or if I should just wait for you to go through the, and I know this is like a question specific to me, but I just want to follow the okay. steps. Yeah. Um, you can bring in the letter to them. Well, see, the thing is, is that there's no way that they can't fill out the letter. They've got to help you. So, cause there's no, there's no way you're going to know some of this information, right? So you've got to, can you guys see my zoom screen? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this is what I'm confused about in terms of, um, the questions that I'm getting concerning this, this particular question question stop i'm trying to get to my all right when you guys submit the iso letter there's specific information that needs to be filled out that um there's no way you're gonna know so you do need to work with your service learning community partner on some of the stuff you got to find out what the banner is so the banner to your service learning community partner in terms of like uh, can you see my SJU University Academic Service? All right, this is not your banner that you're going to be using. It's not, this is an ISO template. This is not what you use for your community partner. Who is your community partner? This needs, you need to insert their logo into here or their official letterhead, right? So you've got to take this letter in because you've got to get approval, right? So you've got to confirm or your service learning community partner has to confirm that your organization maintains and enforces an anti-discrimination policy that prohibits all forms of unlawful discrimination or retaliation. How are you going to know that? So the question I think I I have at least, and I won't speak for others, but the question I have is, is the, is the, the draft or the version that we're submitting tomorrow, the version that has been discussed with the partner or the version that we have a partner and we're in discussions, but we haven't gotten all of the information yet at this point. You need to have your community partner solidified. I understand that you're not going in until Wednesday, but you need to have this letter turned in as the site that you're going to be working with. Right, Will we, but what if we haven't gotten A through C? information yet from that partner you like, need to send that to your community partner I'm like via it. email now because how do you know right so how do you know that uh your community partner does or does not maintain a policy of liability insurance i understand right so there's no way that you can not work with your community partner on this now going back now with the log when i say you don't need multiple signatures that's what I was getting messed up in my head. Your service learning log that you're going to be required to turn in. I just need one signature at the very end of the semester. Okay. That's that's it. But if you don't have this information now, that for tomorrow, that means that you've not established a community partner because St. John's University the law office is not going to let you work with them, especially in a face-to-face -face environment, if, if this information can't be solidified. Understood. Now, with, working with the CMS JSTOR project, that's my project that's hands-on. I've been doing it since 2012, 2013. It's 
something the university has on file. The academic service learning online organizations that I was talking about, those have all been vetted through uh, the service learning community office. That's why all we need is a, a screenshot of your actual account set up. So any of you here for that's in section CRN 12542 uh, that are signed up for the Smithsonian Digital Volunteers Transcription Center, uh, I need, I just need a screenshot of your log. So Anybody? final question, oh, I'm so sorry. Nope, you're fine, go ahead, that's why we're here. Uh, final question about the letter, do, do you need a wet signature on that? No. Letter? Okay. No, no, not, no, not no. at this time. Okay. <laughs> no. I was <laughs> let's let's just try to get the answers from your service learning community partner. That's good enough. Thank and you. And then okay. and, and that's fine. But at least the the um the organ the at least St. John's can go ahead and start vetting your community partners. No, it's that's hugely time. helpful. Hugely helpful. Okay. So see, so I feel bad because I'm like, okay, what what is happening here? What is was, but what I'm seeing is that there are multiple versions of the letter that are needed because there's three different scenarios going on. Establish community partners in the online environment through ASL, establish community partners within the online and after COVID or post COVID, whatever that looks like, um, ASL community partners with me because they've been vetted thoroughly and I've been working with them since 2013. And then there's your own established academic service or your own academic service learning community partners that you're going to be working with within the face-to-face -face environment that's geographically located by your house. Those are the community partners where I need the ISO letter. It, definitely. The other ones, it's um, we're going through the process in terms of Who's signing up for what project? So uh, let me go to the CMS. And I'm not done here, right? So the South Arts, I know I saw that um, ISO letter come in this morning. I'm going to pull or extract the information from that ISO letter onto here, uh, in, right into here. And um, I'm going to start being in contact with your service learning community partners. This is how I, so Matthew, I'm going to be getting in contact with your service learning community partner. So it's kind of a stepped process in terms of how this is working. Uh, St. John's University is establishing the fact that um, they are legally covered by your service learning community partner um, answering those questions. And then um, I am getting all these service learning sites set up. This is how I spent my weekend um, for students. So Emma Raleigh, I, I need your ISO letter, but this is to confirm with the St. John's University um, Academic Service Learning Office and the law office that you, you are doing these activities and that it is a project that you're gonna be working on six hours uh, with the service learning community partner, the Center for Migration Studies um in terms of creating metadata uh friends of maple grove they are newer to me but not to the academic service learning office the prior um director lynn stravino knows carl from the friends of maple grove i met them two summers ago so it's an established community partner and i know gordon's going to be working with the friends of maple grove and um so i just need to make sure you're protected this did i just does that answer all the questions um, with regards to what is what I'm looking for for the ISO letter that's due tomorrow. I, I believe so. Um, it's a yes. lot. I know. I'm going to do my very best. <laughs> <laughs> Send your ISO letter to your, um, your, your community partner that you hope to work with and just have them fill out the um, have them fill out the letter to the best of their ability. Now, I, I do have a few letters that um, I thought I provided as examples, but in hindsight, it was only to my GA. So let me just show you an example. Um, I did send um, anybody that's working on the CMS JSER project with me, I've sent out that letter earlier. Uh, last week or later, it was last week. Um, can you guys see my screen? 
Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Uh, let's go to, oh, she's not gonna care. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. All right, so here's from um, Friends of Maple Grove. Here's their little um, like banner, their, their watermark they use for their organization. This is where they're located. It's all the information it's dated to, from, and here's the letter. Yeah. Some organizations are a little bit more specific. Like for example, for the CMS JSTOR projects that I'm having students work on with me. Um, I worked with Dr. Mary Brown in terms of setting up, who's a part-time archivist over at uh, the Center for Migration Studies and setting up a JSTOR template. So I sent this template out to the five or six students that are working with me for the for the semester. And I it, it was done a little differently. Please open. Uh, there we go. So this is the Center for Migration Studies. Um, this is their, this is what they use on all their letterhead. Two from, this one was dated to spring 2021. Uh, and this is all the information that it, that's found on the ISO letter that is a copy and paste to this template that Dr. Mary Brown and Don, it was confirmed with Don Kerwin, the executive director, that all of this stuff does indeed occur. Uh, student's name, number of hours, no compensation, confirmation of I, I, anti-discriminatory policy. They just simply said, here's the link to that. Here's the evidence. Uh, compliance with all COVID-19 laws. All right, they have an email. I can pull up evidence to that. So confirmation of library liability insurance. I don't need the email. Make sure you have the email on file. What's the date? Who's Who has that file so that St. John's can go back and look at that. So see, this is an established service learning community partner with um, ISO and uh, uh, St. John's need to make sure that all students are safe. We had to make sure that we had something in writing. So these are just a few templates, examples. Uh, all right, so let's go over really quick what I've done. So what I showed you here for the academic, the ASL community partners website, any description that you get from your service learning community partner, I'm doing a copy and a paste and I'm putting it on, on this page here. Uh, so that's the expectation for tomorrow uh, when I get your ISO letters. And that's what I'm using to verify all POCs and then to reach out to them uh, to confirm how you're doing and just to keep in touch during the semester. Now for the museum informatics course, I did grade your museum object selection. Uh, the reason why I was a stiffler on APA formatting is because when we come down here to your uh, enter call your wait. What is it? The um the final project for your stage on the your stage on the stage, and uh, your development of your online museum brochure is that you have to have a page of all of your group members, objects, museum objects, and the resources used to create your narrative in APA format on your museum brochure as part of your museum brochure, and it's going to be published. Uh, and consumed by the online environment, right? So it's going to be viewable for public consumption. So get the APA formatting under your belt now, so that by the time we get to the end of the end of the semester, and um, you're having to turn in your, um, it's here during Challenge Five where you're going to come up with the organization of your final museum brochure, and we have to have meaning Alexandra and I have to have submitted by the following week, week 16, to Tanya, our graphic designer, uh, the finalized version of your museum brochure. And then it's, um, I hope you're gonna use that museum brochure as an artifact for your e-portfolio or for, yeah, for your e-portfolio at the end of the semester. All right, who has questions?
Um, I'm actually in the middle of answering um, Rebecca's question about the practice quizzes. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay. yeah. So sometimes when um, I don't know, Rebecca, were you looking at it a uh, full screen? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I thought so. Maybe um, not. It might be because. I had the exact same question because I was like, okay, this is a practice quiz, but there's no questions. So what's yeah. going on? So I found that if I'm watching it, not full screen, that they will pop up. But if I do have it full screen, they won't. It's the really strange. Yeah, the questions you on the-, the question marks when you open it, cause you shouldn't, they should be hidden. It's the presentation should actually stop when there's a question that pops up. Okay, yeah. so just so I understand, so you have to watch the full lecture in the practice quiz portal and the uh -huh. and the questions come up along the lecture. So if I had watched the lecture in the module mm -hmm. section, that's kind of a waste of time. I have to watch the lecture again in the practice quiz mod module. Uh, um, well, maybe, um, say uh, that one more time. Sure, um, so I've been watching your lectures in the assignments module or like in the um in the in the yeah module section or the assignments module of canvas and then i go to the practice quiz section and i see the lecture again basically i see i see um i'm going yes it was all right my intention my intention was for to have those practice quizzes they're available for you if you wanted to take them which i highly encourage you doing let me just go to the modules i just wonder if i should watch the lecture for the, for the for, i only want to watch the lecture once no offense so i just wonder if i should watch it in the in the practice quiz <laughs> you're not module. me no, okay. no so when I construct the practice quizzes by default of the Canvas system, I have to upload them utilizing the modules page. Now, if you're going to like, so for example, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, let me, let me shit. If you go to the week three page and you just click, click on the link to the PDF, you're not going to get a practice quiz at all, right? I mean, is that what you're seeing? Um, in week three, and I see a practice quiz under the module in week three. Um, let's see, I see a link to it. And I see yes, it's, uh, what I see is a link to the lecture, which is also, I think, linked under just the general assignments. Okay, so here's how I have to set up practice quizzes in Canvas. And once I tell you this, don't assume it's going to be the same for the next semester for another class you take because Canvas likes to do updates, right? So then I have to relearn the system. So this is an update that Canvas did during the summer. If you click here to week three, it's going to take you right to the week three page. So when you scroll down, Here's the copyright basics, for example, right? Um, that's the PDF. Uh, if you go here to the practice quiz, that is the actual quiz. If you go here, that's just the lecture without the quiz. So it was my intention to show you three different ways to access the information uh, because I don't know how you guys learn best. Right. I don't know if you like reading PDFs. I don't know if you like taking the practice quiz or you just want to hear the lecture. So every time I've gone in and I've uploaded the practice quiz, uh, I can change it if you want, but um, I've only just done the small screen. And when I test it, this is how I test it too. So resume quiz. That's yeah, so that. not an important so are the are the questions embedded in that lecture so you yes ma'am mm -hmm. uh, anywhere okay. it says practice quiz that's the practice quiz so i never got that far because i was <laughs> i already watched this <laughs> okay does that help at all yes i will watch the lectures within the practice quiz so i'm doing active learning and listening thank you very much <laughs> sometimes i see students just wanting to Go to like a certain part of the video and not have to take the quiz again. I get that. 
Sometimes I just like to look at the PDF and have that printed out. And I like to take the, I like to answer the questions at the same time. Where I got these ideas from is from my previous job before I retired from the military and they had that training set up. Every time I took my PME, my professional military education, I had to take the embedded practice questions in with the lecture to get credit for the course. But they actually, they actually had a PDF too that was available that matched the lecture, right? And so that allowed me to utilize more than one teaching mode or one, more than one learning mode. I was listening, I was reading, and I was engaged in the questions. So in the online environment, I don't know how any of you learn best. So I'm trying to make sure with this method that I am able to engage students where they learn best. And, and those are the tools that are available. Uh, I have okay. a question. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, for our CMS analysis, mm -hmm. have, um, my partner is with the Welcome Collection in the Welcome Library. And I was doing research on their CMS um, current setup. Yeah. And it seems that they have, they've chosen option four, as mentioned in Misenus. No, I think it. It wasn't me in this article. It was, uh, I think, the Bennett part of, I can't uh -huh. remember. But um, they very, they're very customized. So um, they, they do have a content management system, but then they have taken that content management system and then they have um, organized it in a very customized way with like two other integrations. So essentially they're using three different platforms all as one. So would I be using that as my basis for comparison or? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, just so you know, sometimes museums have such huge collections that they cannot fit all the metadata together with their digitized objects. Click, click, mm -hmm. here's a picture of this object. Mm -hmm. They have to keep that object in a totally separate system like Luna mm -hmm. and then have that metadata and whatever content mm -hmm. management system they're using separate from their digitized assets. Luna's yeah. a very popular one. The Brooklyn Museum of Art is an example of that. They, that's how they manage their collections because they just have so many different artifacts. Yeah. Pick one. So this one, this one has a 12 mile long. Um, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, All repository. Right. So, <laughs> go ahead then. All right. So that's your museum partner, CMS. Mm -hmm. Now that you know how huge their collection is, Mm -hmm. Is there a better one out there for them? So put yeah. that observation that you made mm -hmm. with your partner museum mm -hmm. into your analysis of their system okay. and use that analysis of what they're currently using, your museum partner is currently using for the content management system mm -hmm. as a baseline to see when you review your other two choices that might work better as content management systems for mm -hmm. your museum partner, that's what you've got to bounce your analysis off of, meaning that your museum partner content management system is going to act as the baseline of where they're working at now. And you want to see, well, okay, this is what they're using now and this is where they're at. But mm -hmm. would there be another content management system that would work better for them? In some instances, mm -hmm. yes, in terms of data elements, right? Mm -hmm. And in some instances, no. So start with your museum partner content management system. Mm -hmm. Assess how they do at collection building, browse and search capabilities, presentation. All right. Assess how they do with each of these data elements by utilizing your partner museum collection management system first. Okay. And then where do you go from here? The idea mm -hmm. is to get you um, to be able to produce some sort of conversation while you are possibly interviewing for a job. 
mm-hmm. later on down the road. And it doesn't have to be with this museum, but I want to want you to be able to converse with somebody else on content or collection management systems, the different data elements that are involved in measuring or assessing the value of a content mm-hmm. management system for a specific organization. In this case, it's your museum partner. And then being able to assess, is this good or not good? And how, is there something better out there? That's the whole idea. Okay, and I I have one more question. Mm -hmm. So the features that are listed on, because I have gotten a question from a student about this. So Uh the features on the uh, left of this um, chart. So are those definitions like an expanded version of those definitions? Because I've tried to read all of the articles about content management systems. Is there an expanded definition of what to look for in any of the articles that I probably haven't read yet. Um, Like for example, what is collection building with in reference to like, you know, a content management system? How does that look in a content management system and browse and search? How does that look? I I do have something, but it's an older article. So I was hesitant in giving it to you guys because it's older. I mean, do you want that or or no? Because it does have definitions in there about what you're asking for, expanded definitions for different data elements to assess when looking at content management systems. I, I think that might help a oh, little bit. Okay. Yeah, Just because you no, know, like um, archive space uh, took over archivist toolkit. So archivist mm-hmm. toolkit when you're looking at this no longer exists or it's no longer being supported by archive space it's just archive space and they say it's free but when you actually look get in there and you look at it yeah it, it it's it's not yeah, so they, i mean they always cool. say it's free it's freemium so <laughs> but um but really just the definitions it doesn't really matter if it's like still in use but like what is a content type um, you know, and kind of expanded, like, what are the different content types that I, that I should be looking for? Um, because that is where I got a little hung up because I was looking through the articles, like, well, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Um, and then another student asked the same question. So okay. that's what I was, um, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and I'll send that to each individual person via, via email and I'll go ahead and I'll post it on the website. Okay. On, Thank on you. the campus website. Very, very good. Okay. Um, but it's it was like a study done in the early part of the 2000s. Okay. It's the definitions have not fallen out of uh-huh. use. They they are still in use. It's just the um technology has changed. Yeah, that's really all that. Yeah, so the technology changing, that's okay, but it's really just the um, definitions that I think would be useful. So okay. it doesn't really, yeah. All right, so that is that is my on my to-do list. Okay, uh, we're at the 30 minute mark. And so if there is nothing else, this is going to be uploaded to this video is, is being recorded. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube. And then I owe you guys that that article for the museum and the content management systems. Okay. Okay. All right. So Jenny, please let me know if there is anything else, any other questions or anything like that. I don't but, see anything in chat or anything. So all right. Well, I know some students are going to you before they go to me, if at all. And so I think it's a matter of comfort, but um I appreciate everything you're doing. Oh, sure. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to stop recording.